<laughs> All right, we got, yeah, we, got we got it. 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 Okay. So, um, Megan and Rich, tell us a little bit about Seattle. So, you know, I, I think it's one of the top, you know, at least five, seven places that New Yorkers move to. Um, what, you know, why do you find people quickly tell us a little bit about your history of Seattle, like why you like it, why you're there. Um, and then a little bit about, you know, what, what draws people coming to Seattle? Yeah, I'm actually a rare born and raised Seattleite, uh, Washingtonian. Um, my family ended up here because of actually the military base. Um, we have a really large um, military installment here, both Naval and Air Force and Army. Um, but I, we love the, the Northwest and the fact that it's really a, it's an interesting place because there's so much different type of real estate type of lifestyle all in one place all within a couple hours you're really close to go to the east east side of the mountains which is like a completely different state you're about two hours from vancouver um canada and then you're about um three hours to portland from seattle wow yeah so you're kind That's of great centrally located in the fact that while we're kind of way out here in the upper left corner um there's a lot there's a lot uh, to access it's easy to get to pretty much anywhere. Traffic is kind of terrible downtown, but once you get out. <laughs> not right now. <laughs> not right now. Like, um, not right now. It's not lovely right now. right now. Um, we can get there in like 30 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's really funny. Yeah. And um, so Seattle is, everyone thinks they're moving to Seattle when in actuality most people end up living in a suburb around Seattle. Um, whether it be directly like a neighborhood connected to Seattle or if it's over Bellevue East Side, um, even if somebody's looking for like a second home or a vacation home up in the San Juans, um, Eastern Washington, and then maybe they're looking for something just like we have so much waterfront here and there's areas where you can, if you don't have to be in the city every day and mm -hmm. that that you can get an incredible property for like a fraction of the price of being right in Seattle. So there's a lot of opportunities for people. Um, it's been one of the hottest markets in the country for quite some time. Obviously one of our big drives have been jobs, but mm -hmm. um, the, the Northwest, uh, the, the na nature hiking, all the activities and things like that here are another draw for people. That's amazing. Yeah. My husband, Sean, he loves Seattle. That's one of his favorite, uh, one of his favorite cities. Now, is it kind of a laid back? Is it? Is it? You know, is there a little bit, a little bit, a little bit of a laid back vibe to it at all, or hard, or how does that it work? I just which, go ahead. Yeah, it depends which city, which part of the city you're in. Like, I would say generally we're pretty casual here. Um, it's you're not gonna like people don't dress up as much. It's very much like there's all the jokes about the, that we all wear North Face because we're going on lots of adventures, but you're really just going to work. <laughs> <laughs> so um, right? it, it's a little bit more laid back, but if you're maybe in Bellevue, um, it's not, it's a little bit more formal. Um, and then the more you go outside of the city, the more uh, kind of laid back and relaxed it, it is. It's, it's definitely once you, especially once you get outside of the city, it's a slower, it's a little bit slower pace. Um, but downtown is pretty people it's laid back, but it is hectic and traffic filled. So Okay. Yeah. Well that makes sense. Now tell me a little bit like so so when people move there, you know, everybody wants to know, quote unquote, what, you know, what is what is a blue chip neighborhood and uh, and what is an up and coming neighborhood? Can you tell me a little bit about uh about that? Like where what what is considered blue chip in that area and what's up and coming and, and why are they are they that way one of the big things is dependent on is like someone's motivation if they're moving here and retiring we don't have income tax uh here in washington which not a lot of people actually know about they were kind of one that's it's a little bit less publicized that we don't have income tax so we do get a lot of people moving here for tax benefits on that even though our real estate is expensive so if you're retiring versus if you have to get into a job every day in the city which who knows if that's coming back um is very dependent on what type is the like most desirable neighborhood um but definitely like mercer island mm -hmm. you know those those type of areas you know okay and what what makes mercer island so exciting or what's what's the cachet with 
with Mercer. Pretty much all it's waterfront and it's super fast access into the city. You could get into either Bellevue or into downtown Seattle very quickly from there, but you definitely pay a massive premium for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's, so it's, 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 you know, for, for, for people here out East, it's, it's kind of the, the first suburb out of the city, if you will. So it would either be like, like a Greenwich, Connecticut or, Bronxville and Westchester, that type of thing. Is that a fair analysis? Yeah, and, and it's, analogy? it's literally, it is, and it's literally the most expensive area in the whole area as well. So I think the most expensive home that sold there last year, I think it was 24 million, or the year before last year was 24 million. Wow. So it's definitely, uh, um, yeah, it's it, it's pretty much double, the the average price is pretty much double what it is in Seattle. I mean, it, it, I mean a typical home that's selling there can be, about double what the equivalent would be in Seattle. Understood. And what's great is in about uh, four minutes, we're going to start seeing some real live properties, which I'm excited to see. Uh, so anybody that's interested in moving out to Seattle, you get to see them, uh, you know, call Megan and Rich. They're right there. Yeah, you can see them right. tomorrow. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, okay. And then, I'm, you know, and then he also like, how much do people have to put down for houses out there? Is there like, let's say up to a million dollars. Can you put, 10% down or is it 20 usually or how does that work? It really depends on what the lending is with your particular lender. I would okay. say we more commonly see people putting the more like 20% down, um, especially if it's if it's a jumbo and um, okay. if it is in a higher price range. Um, lower end, you can people put less down. They still offer like you can still get in with a VA loans and um, first-time home buyers as well um, okay but a lot of the really large properties like the very expensive ones we see cash um, but like the north of eight million um, and okay. even in the you know we see a lot of cash in that range um, which makes it very straightforward um, right. but it really depends on your lender, what they, what product they can offer you. Okay. That makes sense. And I'm sorry, when you, when I was asking you the question about the up and coming area, it looks like the, I had to fix the Facebook live. Um, did we talk about that already or not? I apologize. <laughs> probably the, no, we didn't really. The, the more up and coming areas say probably Tacoma, which was actually the hottest market in the U S last year. Um, oh, interesting. Is, yeah. Even though there's hotter areas around, it's kind of weird, right? That seems contradictory, mm -hmm. but there are, Rimmerton and Port Orchard are actually considerably hotter than Tacoma, but Tacoma was named the hottest market in the U.S. And it's, uh, um, that has been up and coming for quite a while, but it's just lagged so far behind Seattle. You know, it's about half the price, basically, wow. of, uh, of, of Seattle. So it's, uh, then that, that one's been moving up for, for quite a while and, and we don't see it stopping anytime soon because it's still so far behind. <laughs> oh, interesting. And what, what, what makes it great? Is it a small town feel or what does everybody like about that? that it, is a, it is definitely a smaller town feel. It has most of the things that Seattle has, you know, all the great restaurants and all that kind of stuff. But it, it's mm -hmm. usually if you see Seattle in a movie, for example, it's not Seattle. Unless you see the Space Needle, they don't move that. <laughs> but, the, uh, <laughs> but when they're filming like in a neighborhood, it's typically Tacoma, like um, 10 Things I Hate About You. That was Stadium right down, um, right downtown uh, Tacoma. Wow. And, um, Hand the rocks to cradle. We actually sold the house next to the hand the rocks to cradle. House. Oh, really? Wow! It, so it has a uh, nice feel the way Seattle used to be. <laughs> oh, interesting, interesting. So, just a quick antidote is uh, you know my degree is architectural engineering, and we always got to see the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, the one that that collapsed. That was the big, you know, <laughs> galloping Gertie. Galloping yeah, Gertie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we live right on the other side of that. Long gone, and it's yeah. safe to go over there. It's but, still there uh, though. It's, oh, really? it's, it's, it's in the water, yeah. Yeah, it's like a natural habitat for, like, there's octopus down there. Um, wow. People go scuba diving and spear fishing. I personally wouldn't do it, but uh, no. people do. And we actually live right across right across it. So we live in a wow. suburb um, about 45 minutes outside the city, 40 minutes outside the city. And um, where we live also is expanding the ferry system. And that's a really interesting piece of what's up and coming in the Seattle area is they've announced the expansion of the fast ferry routes, which feels a little bit more like open than public transportation. You know, you're on a boat 
um, crossing into the city, but it's a 23 to 30 minute um, cross across the water. So to downtown Seattle. So that's a really exciting thing. And since Bremerton launched there, they've gone up over 40%. Yeah, yeah, wow. over 40%. So it's a, it's a nice commute. You don't have to drive and you've got the ferry. All right, so this is, this is the part the audience always loves, is seeing real live properties. Um, so, so what is the first price point that we're going to look at? This is going to be entry price point, and, and what is the range for that? We're looking at like about 8 to 1.2 on this. Okay. Um, there are outside the city and in some of these up-and-coming neighborhoods, you'll see they're scattered throughout like their higher-end homes um, in, the, in this range even. So what we kind of did is brought you some properties that show like, what you can kind of get closer into the city some of the really um like well-liked suburbs and then even like the vacation home option and the different price points so you can kind of see wh where your money goes in seattle and what you can get for okay the area great so i just made you the co-host hopefully that'll enable you to share your screen we are going to share a screen here all oh, right. Okay. Wow. You're much more technically proficient than our uh, end was this morning. <laughs> <laughs> so right. we're going we're gonna to start with a little, this is a, um, a kind of a starter home in actual Seattle. Um, oh my gosh, and you that's can, super cute. And mm -hmm. Queen Anne is a really desirable neighborhood, but um, as you can see, it was built in 1905, tons of historic homes, but it is um, a small, smaller sized bungalow. Um, okay, and small for that was, was how many square feet? 2,400? This is 1290. Yep. Oh, 1290 square feet. I was looking at the lot yeah. size. Okay. Yeah, 736 yeah. a square foot. And then in Tacoma, on the other hand, you, this one is 5,000 square feet, and it's wow. a historic home in the heart of the stadium district, which uh, North Yakima, so an interesting fact about, like Tacoma was actually the original main city in the, in the Seattle area. It has one of the deepest ports, and so it was a port city, and um, like naturally deep ports. And we still, that's actually what the t Toyota Tacoma was named after. I know that's not uh, great. <laughs> they uh, that said they bring sense. a lot of them in here. Um, so as you can see, it this is what the neighborhood looks like looking out. Wow, there. that's the view. It's an overview. Okay. So like this is the house uh, here. You would okay. have a view of the sound. This yeah. is Annie Wright, which is a really um and uh popular. Well, it's actually a boarding school, but you can also send your kids there if you live nearby. Okay. So. As you can see, like this is all same year built, 19, well, one year different, 1904 versus 1905. And so they're right at the same price range. And so it kind of shows where your money can go in Tacoma versus Seattle. That's amazing. That's a huge, it's a huge value difference. Now, again, how long does it take to get to Seattle from Tacoma? Currently, it currently takes about 40 minutes. And, and it normally does, as long as you don't have to go between six and eight in the morning. So we always, we always wait till the traffic leaves, drive up there at nine if we have to go up there. And then we just know we have to be back by 2.30 or we're having dinner. <laughs> and, and then drive back after. But otherwise, there's really not much traffic during the day. And there's not okay. much traffic later. So it's, it's pretty easy, um, as long as it's not between for well, those two hours in the morning, two hours in the afternoon. And one thing to mention on Tacoma is we have a, um, a light rail system that's already established through Tacoma, but it's connecting to Seattle um, in the next, it's like in over the next five to 10 years, but um, you know how these projects take forever, but that's one of the reasons values are going up so incredibly fast right now and have been in Tacoma because of the accessibility to downtown. So, um, and they are, we do have a train already, the, the sounder that runs in the mornings and the commute times um, home as well, um, downtown Seattle. So you, there's, there are public transportation options from Tacoma, which is one of the reasons it um, flourishes. That's amazing, absolutely. Uh, so as you go to the next property, you mentioned the stadium district. What, 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 what is the stadium or is there a team in Tacoma? 
or was um, it her team? Oh, it is the high school. Um, it's the coolest look. It's the Hogwarts. It is the Hogwarts um, of Tacoma. Yeah. Or of the wow. U.S. It, it, if you've seen the movie 10 Things I Hate About You, it is actually a public high school and it is, it's worth, it's worth a Google. It's stunning. And um, the, the, the football team plays actually in a bowl that's built into the side of the hill and it looks out over the water. It's, it's kind of unbelievable. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Wow. Yeah. I'm from Wisconsin. We got cornfields. It was very. Yeah. Um, we, have, we have a lot of water here. Um, so, so so what's next up on the price point if we wanted to go to kind of a middle range? Uh, yeah. So what, what we'll, we're going to kind of go down here. I have some vacation properties to show you at the end, but this kind oh, of shows. Nice what for like 1.2 in seattle you're again you're in kind of this is um again closer into downtown okay doesn't get you much so in, uh, in downtown but it's 400 square feet uh you know just as a you know three bedrooms in new york city are if you have 1800 square feet you're you're a superstar yeah. So, yeah. 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 That's true. New York is a very different animal. That is for sure. Yeah. It's, so yeah. this is all great. This is all great to see uh, with that. And that Lake Sammamish one, uh, Sammamish is slightly further to the east. And it's actually that Sammamish is up, uh, that, that area is up 12% over last year at this time. So it's actually. That is booming much more so than Seattle and Bellevue. And I think our, our guess was that was going to happen because people want to get slightly farther out as you know, because of, uh, because of all the stuff that's been going on. Okay. And, and uh, okay. So what's the next property you want to show us? This one, for example, is in fall city. This is a good example of if compass wants to pull up this picture. Um, sometimes it hates this. Well, yeah, that's um, at least it does it from the uh, it's 5.8 acres and oh. now it's funny um right here this fall city property that's choosing no longer to it won't show. even upload on there yeah it won't even show on there now, now okay. um, yeah uh, yeah we we'll just go to another property so as you go yes. to another one are you seeing a lot of chinese buyers um come in and foreign buyers or are they still kind of in the vancouver in Thing. They're in definitely in Seattle and, and so it kind of pushed out of Bellevue. Vancouver and so Seattle Bellevue for sure the outskirts okay. not not so much um, okay it, definitely they're more interested in the being closer in yes more of the urban areas okay um, and Bellevue even over Seattle so like is mm -hmm. this is kind of an example of what you can get for a condo um, this is this one is Alki is West Seattle which is um, you can take a water taxi into downtown, um, but it's considered basically being in Seattle. And then um, this is a condo in Seattle. It's not going to open. It's not going to open. Mm -hmm. We're all having technical difficulties today. It's a technical yeah. difficulty. Yeah. Can you show us yes. something that, what, between like the two and a half and three million dollar range? Yeah. What do you get for that? So the, one of the ones we mentioned, this is just an example of Port Orchard and Bremerton being a up and coming area. This is on the high end of their market here. This one that I'm pointing to, the Lighthouse Drive, 1.6, wow. you can get waterfront and that's right on the ferry route. A lot of waterfront. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's amazing. So, um, we're looking up here in the, this is one we sold, for example, in Gig Harbor. Okay. And it is um, right downtown Gig Harbor, um, Deepwater Moorage, and that one, went in the 2.5 well that's what it sold for um okay and as you get further we can go over to all and i can show you some of the other ones that so how is how is the is 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 everything stopped right now because of the pandemic are people moving mm. or what's kind of the feeling right now we are actually having it in a crazy busy time Sorry to move this so fast. No, that's um, okay. I'm getting you your the 2.5 range. So things are, are moving along quite well. Yes. And so the difference, things are moving along quite well. And we're seeing um, 
a lot of activity. Two of the counties, well, well quite a number of the counties have actually had the strongest. Yeah, the Pierce County, which is just outside of Seattle, that's, that's where we live. It's basically where, it's where Tacoma is. That actually had the highest median sales price of any month ever in uh, April. And uh, most of the most of the areas around here that aren't in Seattle and or in Bellevue, either April or May was the highest median sales price ever for any any month. So it wow. uh, so people are moving. So yeah, we just have about five minutes. It always goes so fast on this. Can you show us um, maybe some some prop some like super fancy properties so we could be yes. kind of gawkers on stuff. And if yes. anything can click through, that would be great. Yeah, we will. This is one that we currently have listed. Okay. And I love it. it undisclosed. It's an undisclosed location. <laughs> yes. And it's in Bellingham, um, which is uh, halfway between Seattle and downtown Vancouver. Um, okay. So it's just a few minutes from the border and it's 367 acres and it's two homes. Um, it's a private estate um, with two barns and covered arena and um, about five million in timber on it currently um room for helipad and it's all water view so you look out over the san juans and um even though you feel like you're a world away you're only like five minutes from the freeway Great. wow that's amazing so this is 367 acres yes that's incredible it is. Wouldn't be able to get that in Seattle or Bellevue. That's for that's <laughs> yeah. for sure. <laughs> wow, that is Bellevue. Amazing. It basically is all of Bellevue. <laughs> wow, that's amazing. And when you mentioned timber, I mean, is that it, you obviously wouldn't clear cut everything? Do is that is there like a special like law or rule you if you wanted to harvest the timber, it's like five percent a year or something, or how does that work? This one actually grandfathers in with a permit that. Um, you're allowed to clear cut, which is crazy. Okay. Right. Um, and then for for another showstopper, we got there's currently one listed for 28 million. Um, yeah, let's it's take an a look island. at that one. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's one of the it's off the San Juan Islands. It's 127 acres. Incredible. And if you want something a little bit more traditional Seattle where you want to be like in with Bill Gates and every here's a Mercer Island one but like Bill Gates and every all those people live in Medina mm -hmm. so uh -huh. I was gonna say Medina <laughs> yeah. yeah right we have Austin some weird versus pronounced... Houston, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah that's right the one that he uh always laughs about is squim it's spelled s-e-q-u-i-m sequim but it's squim there's no way you get squim out of that there's wow. too many silent letters. <laughs> so this is a, a good example of like Medina waterfront. Um, Medina is Medina and Mercer Island are definitely the two most expensive zip codes in Seattle. Um, it's where Bill Gates has made houses. Um, and uh, you definitely pay to be in Medina. Yeah. Wow. Would this be a teardown or would it or is the house nice? Um, it is it probably going to be a teardown at, at 19 million. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hear you. Yeah. Wow, guys. <laughs> so, uh, so we, it always goes so fast. Uh, so, so, you know, what I thought was amazing is, is for the million dollar mark, you, you get a lot for your property out there where you get, you know, you, you get a lot for your money out there. Um, do you have any final um parting words or anything before we go about uh seattle definitely the the i knowing what you want when you come in is and keeping your mind open about the location and thinking about like which pieces are important to you we all often see people coming from like new york and california that have this idea that they want to be close into the city or they want to like maybe um California wise, they want to downsize. Um, mm -hmm. But we actually end up calling it down pricing because most people end up not buying directly uh, downtown. They end up wanting to buy an actual like single family home, um, get a little bit more space. And we really try and go through with people like what their amenities are that they really want. Like, do you want to be on the water? Do you want to um, 
do you want investment potential? Do you want easy commute? All of that. So it really has a little something for everyone. That's why we work the whole area as opposed to just one small area mm -hmm. because we would be losing all of our clients constantly because <laughs> as soon as they tell us what they're looking for, it's usually not You'd what be they like, say. Uh, what they were thinking. Okay, yeah. Well, that's yeah. great. Well, uh, Megan and Rich Watson, thank you so much for sharing some insight on Seattle today here with Ask the Expert. And yeah. uh, we'll have this recorded and, and have all your information on and everything. And thank you great. so much for your time today. It's been really insightful. Thank you for yeah, having thanks. us. Thank all you. right.